follow the coast north of the Tyne, go beyond Berwick-upon-Tweed, where you soon enter Scotland, and after Eyemouth, remember to turn left, otherwise you will fall into the sea. This rocky promontory is St Ab's Head, where the coast suddenly turns inland, soon becoming the Firth of Forth, making for Edinburgh. I took the bus from Berwick, stopping at Eymouth, spending a pleasant hour photographing the colourful fishing boats and with a bit of time for coffee. This is surely a subject that cries out for a bit of oomph in colour, and whilst I tweak the camera controls by setting the white balance to sunny, even though I am saving to raw, I underexpose by one third of a stop and give the images that final polish in Adobe Lightroom. These of course are resized JPEG copies from the adjusted raw files. I took another bus to St. Abbs, a secluded fishing village smaller than Ima. I caught it at a quiet time, as it is popular, so I am told, with scuba divers on account of its clear water. Nevertheless, I didn't hang around too long, making instead for St. Abbs head with a sense of determination. As the light was still good and having come such a long way from home, there is always the danger of being thwarted at the last moment by a bit of rogue cloud that wasn't forecast. The headland is volcanic, and there is a variety of colour in the rocks. Some are softer and eroded into gullies. It is a national nature reserve, and there are plenty of paths encouraging exploration. These are views for which the photographer requires clarity of light, and I was lucky. It was so clear that Bass Rock could just be perceived in the distance. Clarity of light brings the peril of high contrast, for which the camera requires a bit of help to avoid incorrect exposure. Going against perceived photo correctness, I underexpose by spot metering a highlight with the help of the electronic finder in my EM1. This can lead to dark shadows, which I light on in post production. The main risk, and I am told there may be others, but I haven't found them yet, is noise, which unintentionally can be added to the image. I found with experience that I know through intuition how far I can tweak the sliders in Lightroom. And anyway, by darkening the image first in camera, this avoids the problem later of blown out highlights, particularly in clouds that are difficult, if not impossible, to correct even in Lightroom or Photoshop. These images, incidentally, are all handheld. I did the circuit and took the service buses back to Berwick. All thankfully went to plan, because that evening I caught the train back to London King's Cross, relishing vivid memories of the day whilst I enjoyed dinner with wine, courtesy of my first class ticket. If I missed that train, I would have to pay again, and quite likely more than for a standard ticket on the day, as my first class ticket was purchased in advance, and therefore comes with restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> 